first of all, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Kavindu Chaturanga Madapata, the local committee president of ISEC in University of Prairadhinia, and Mr. Manod de Lak Lakshan, official expansion president of ISEC in Slate, ISEC Sri Lanka 2021. So my first question goes to uh, Mr. Kavindu. It is a well-known fact that one's role as an effective leader does not go on one streamline. Based on your journey as an ISACer, what were the instances where you had to embrace change? Okay, Sakbo. Uh, so first, uh, I would like to thank the National Showcasing Team for inviting me to this uh, podcast. And I consider it as a very big privilege to be here. And like, uh, this is a great innovation, which itself proves that uh, effective leaders do not go on one streamline, right? So when talking about myself, uh, I joined ISEC uh, the early 2018 as a member of incoming global volunteer function. I joined ISEC because I saw this as a place that I can release stress. Because you know that uh, in the university with the academics and all, like we are in a very big pressure. So I was this really talkative guy in Isaac in Candy who was running here and there for all the events in my IG project, like not taking anything much serious. So that was me when I got into the organizing committee of NatCon 2019 as OCVP marketing. Well, uh, that's where I got into the marketing. And even though I was the same crazy person there too, but things changed when I decided to apply and got selected for the local committee vice president position for marketing of Isaac and Candy. So the crazy character I mentioned before understood the gravity of the leadership role he holds and started to be someone who can become an example to someone. So another example I can give you to a question is the most important example. So it's the making of the decision to step into the role of local committee president of Isaac in Candy. So again, it was getting the responsibility of the youngest local committee of Isaac in Sri Lanka, which I believe as a really critical thing. But uh, in that case, like the motive I got from my role models and especially my predecessor, Mr. Mr. Ranasinghe, who is the elect MCVP for talent management, helped me to be steady in that change. Uh, I so as a saying goes like this, alone we can do so little, Together, we can do so much. A leader alone cannot be the change maker. When you are implementing development plans for the betterments of your followers. So what initiatives do you take in order to inspire your followers to be collaborative and innovative? Uh, yeah, thank you, Sanko. Um, so first of all, I would like to thank uh, the National uh, Showcasing Team for organizing uh, this sort of uh, events uh, to reach out to uh, our members and uh, to uh, you know the society as well. So um, I totally agree with uh, what you said uh, initially. A leader alone cannot always bring the change, and uh, also you can't expect your followers to uh, be collaborative all the time. And uh, the reason for that would be uh, the nature of the human, because uh, they don't always like to change or uh, to embrace changes around them. And uh, it's a challenge that uh, a leader has to go through. Um, you know, when you're planning to do something new or to uh, implement something new. And um, they have all the right reasons to be scared or to be afraid of these changes because uh, maybe it's uh, because uh, they're familiar with the current state or the current system or whatever that is you are going to change or uh, they're comfortable with it uh, because uh, you know it has been there for some time so uh, yeah there can be different reasons for this 
and uh, because of these reasons they don't want uh, this state to change and uh, most of the time what they fear more than the change more than the change itself is the transition to this change uh, or the ch or the journey uh, that you have to go through in order to uh, achieve this change and uh, sometimes uh, you know people are afraid of the change but uh, but rather they expect what they expect is a good change so we as a good leader should always be responsible enough to uh, give the change that they ask for so um, yeah as a good leader you have to consider about all these factors before you uh, you're making plans or taking decisions and uh, before everything you need to plan it properly uh, you know like how it's going to work and uh, how the transition is going to be and uh, if it doesn't work what's the contingency plan you always have to have a contingency plan if it doesn't work and uh, you have to think about uh, all these things before you know you make decisions or plans and uh, once you're done with planning everything you have to confront these plans to your followers or your team leaders or your employees and uh, then they will be like okay this guy has a plan and he knows what he's doing and then they'll start trusting you right so the most important thing is taking their feedback taking your team members or your followers feedback when you're making these plans and let them engage with this process the process of planning and uh, give them the ownership and empower them to design these changes themselves so um, i believe that if you do these things it's not going to be okay uh, thank you mr manod lakshan official expansion president of isaac in split for expressing your ideas about making a change so my next question goes to mr kavindu so uh, as we all know every organization has a unique culture even in isaac we have a unique culture so being being in a local committee position like a local committee vice local committee president is a very challenging role visiting one of the global youth run organizations so my question is what are the instances in which you have considered applying a change in your local committee breaking away from the initial organization culture yeah uh, okay so so uh, for that question uh, i would like to take uh, the current situation as the best example right so once uh, i got selected as the local committee president of isaac in candy uh with the foundation we had from the last term uh, the term 1920 me and my executive board like together we had uh, i mean like big exchange targets because uh, the global exchanges are the main thing that we do uh, while developing the youth leadership so we had big targets for this term so everything we did at the initial planning was totally for that in order to achieve that right so the recruitments and the event timelines the entry timeline the whole year every single thing was planned in order to achieve that thing but suddenly we got hit by this uh, coronavirus crisis the whole world got hit and like the Uh, the isec uh, organize as organization uh, we had to come out with some contingency contingency plans so the culture that we initially had was kind of goal driven right so we had many targets and like the goals so we plan to achieve those things but all of a sudden with this thing we had to change that whole culture within the isec in candy to a culture which focused more about membership like more about member motivation and then talent development so the main reason was we 
understood that those are the main things that we can do as an organization because we should make strong our biggest foundation of the entity which is the membership of Isaac and Candy. So at that moment we changed our culture into a culture that focus more on member development because if the membership is strong in the future at any type of challenge the entity the organization will be able to withstand that so in that case i also like uh, should mention this thing as well so as isec the world largest youth run organization we have a separate unique culture right so whenever we uh, do these type of innovations or things we should not move away from this uh, unique culture we have but uh, we can do the innovations and modifications with the challenges we face uh, from that original culture we have so Currently, I personally also believe that uh, after 70 years, we are still in the world as the strongest youth run organization because of that. Like we implemented those things. We came out with innovations. We came out with modifications and faced all the challenges. So that's what I think that uh, when whenever we are in a challenge, we should change our culture, but we should keep the original thing as well. Thank you, Mr. Kavindu Chaturanga for expressing your ideas as to how to modify and innovate the initial culture according to the different circumstances. So my next question goes to Mr. Manod. So uh, this question is so relatable to the current situation in Sri Lanka and all over the world. So most of the time, the change that occurs in organization is unplanned and unpredictable. According to you, what might be the factors that can have a negative impact on the process of change within an organization? Yeah, so um, I don't think uh, I have to go that far for an example because uh, right now we are going through a similar situation um so sri lanka was so not ready for this and uh we have not faced a similar situation in the past as well so people were kind of lost at first uh, as to as of what to do what we are going to do um how to adapt to this situation and uh, what other alternatives do we have so these kind of uh, questions arose in the community and uh, also in the corporate sector as well um so the key weakness i see uh, the key weakness I see here is uh, that we should always expect change. And we did not. We did not expect change. It's, it's true that, as you said, uh, it's not always predictable uh, as of, uh, you know, what sort of changes are going to happen precisely. But uh, we, do not, we do know that uh, changes are inevitable, right? So uh, there's always a chance for something to happen. So uh, we have to be ready to face challenges and uh, to accept these changes. And um, after, like, we have to accept this and we have to adapt to these situations very quickly. Adaptability is a very important quality in a leader. Uh, and uh, you have to be solution oriented, which is uh, one of the leadership qualities uh, that we develop in ISEC. Right? So, um, you have to start innovating and uh, most importantly these things should not take much time you have to react very quickly that is also very important and uh, yeah so the bottom line is uh, you have to always expect the unexpected and uh, improvise adapt and overcome and uh, if you fail to do so it's going to hit you hard yeah uh, thank you mr manod uh, you explain how to adapt to the situation and be solution oriented. So my next question goes to uh, uh, 
uh, Mr. Manoj again. So when considering people, people are always changing. That is the nature of people. So as an individual, do you believe that coping with change in a positive way creates a competent leader? And why is that? Uh, yes, yes, I certainly do believe that. <clears throat> and uh, as I said earlier, um, a good leader should always embrace change. And um, you, all, all, you also said that uh, people have a natural resistance to change. It's, uh, it's, it's actually more like, uh, it's like a stress that they go through when they're confronted with changes. And uh, this fear is uh, driven by a lot of reasons. And uh, as I said earlier, it's a human nature. So uh, it's fine, it's fine uh, to be like that. But uh, if you want to be a good leader, you have to be ready to embrace change. And uh, you, you have to expect the unexpected because uh, we don't know what we'll have to uh, face in the future. And, uh, you know, talking about ISEC, ISEC has always been um, <clears throat> an organization uh, about changes, like we have gone through a lot of changes. So, uh, yeah, making strategies is, is uh, essential. And uh, in order to make strategies, you need to be ready uh, to embrace change. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Manod, for your ideas. So my next question goes to uh, Mr. Kabilu. That is the last question. So what is your opinion on being criticized as a leader? And how will you consider criticism during the process of decision making? Yeah, uh, okay, so. So, according to my personal view, like uh, every leader should be open for criticism, right? Uh, because uh, if you're a leader, you should spend some time uh, to listen to the criticism and like the final decision should like the final decision you make should be yours itself 100 percent yours but if you listen to those things and uh, if you get what is beneficial and if you think something is not relevant if you think this is not correct like just leave it but you can get some good things from a constructive criticism as well. So, if you get that into your decision making, you can fertilize your decision for sure. So, a leader can think himself or herself that about the criticism he or she get for the decision and nurture those decisions from taking good points from that and leave in the things that you think those are not relevant so finally the most important thing should be the leader should be the one who make the final decision even though you consider like you are open for those reasons so finally like the my personal opinion is as a leader we need to be open for criticism because it is helpful in making any strong or correct decision uh, thank you mr kavindu you have expressed your ideas how to react how to react to the criticisms in a positive way so i hope this session will surely make a change uh, towards the society and uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Kavindu Chaturanka Madapata, local committee president of ISAC in University of Peradeniya and Mr. Manod Lakshan, official expansion president of ISAC in state for your collaborative and innovative ideas. So also I would like to thank uh, national showcasing team of ISAC uh, in Sri Lanka for having me as a moderator 